to put some hands on the seat. Sorry about that. No worries. Thank you. 
also want to push back on the potentially alienating notion of gender abolition that might come with a gender strike. Because what happens if we continue to strike and all of our devalued labor goes undone? If I seek to dedicate my life to black liberation, and if all women did the same, what would happen to our community? Because no one would come and save our community. While woman is a category of human existence that is violently marginalized, my womanhood is sacred because, uh, because of the ways in which white supremacy makes womanhood inaccessible to me as a black woman. As a, cis woman, as a cis woman, I don't have to experience the fallout of gender abolition. Despite misogynoir, I've never had to convince anyone that I'm a real woman the way that trans women do. And it speaks to my complicity in that gendered violence that I can just opt out of those systems rather than to front and to dismantle them. The most painful thing that racial capitalism does is sap us of our generative and imaginative political energy. It saps us of our ability to conceive of radical solidarity. And we become dependent on the crumbs brought to us by the so-called progressive democratic party. In this moment, I call on us to imagine a social and economic and political system where gender differences may exist, but gendered labor is understood equally and valued equally. Bay Area, a 
transnational feminist, anti-imperialist organization, built by, led by, and run by women of color. I am also a Mexican woman from the Bay Area and have three generations of migrant mothers born in the Mission District here in San Francisco. of the 99% anti-populist, anti-racist, anti-imperialist, anti-fascist. Yeah. 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 Bay Area recognizes that there is a global resurgence of neo-fascism. And we know that fascism does not maintain within borders with fascism. So our our fight must cross borders as well. So I wanted to come here, up here and talk about a couple of events that are coming up that are in line with this movement building. They're anti-racist, anti-fascist, and we're gonna keep shutting down ICE. We're gonna shut them down here today. Downtown we'll also pretty short, pretty shortly. A group There's a demonstration starting at five o'clock. From Dallas, yeah. Called the I'll Black be heading over there. Black women defense Probably gonna shoot for a fresco as well. And but, but it's great that we we'll saw each other. Convergent who have been fighting fascists for years, <laughs> and we invite you all out on Saturday. It's Greece, going to be at you know, Omni Greece back at the headquarters actually, from ten to um, six. Omni Commons in Oakland on Sunday. In the mic. On Sunday. On Sunday, the conference will be at CIIS in San Francisco, also from 10 to 6. So we want to see your faces out there and continue to see your faces fighting. I actually did a live video up for earlier our with, uh, of where I was at um, uh, this location earlier. So. You should actually see it in the, um, in the Facebook community. So. I've actually asked my brother to actually get down to the south side with a, to, uh, film, a chant for all of us to film the situation. Uh, oh, yeah. So it's going to go like this. What do we want? Justice. What do we want it now? And if we don't get it, shut it down. And if we See, don't get it, shut it down. This was the assignment. Right. The stringer. So I'm going to do both. What do we want? Justice.
guys are amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Up for them because that was amazing. <laughs> there are a couple other speakers out there, and if you want to come to the stage, I'm I'm looking out for you. <laughs> speak up, though. Oh, I can go speak. Everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. How we liking this weather today? There's something out there that got it that have us in their favor. Yes. Yes. it's been raining too much. So, um, my name is Akira Jackson. I am the community mobilization coordinator for Childless Coalition, which stands for Trans Activists. Trans Activists for Justice and Accountability Coalition. Right. On Sunday, February 1st, 2015, Taja Gabriela de Jesus was brutally stabbed and became the fifth trans woman to be murdered in the U.S. in 2015. So, um, you know, do the math, that's like 30, 31, 32 days in the new year. So um, this year, there has already been seven transgender women that have been murdered in the U.S. in less than two months. This is an occurrence that is typical here in the United States. Out of the seven women that was murdered, one was Native American and the others were African American. Considering the size of this community, these numbers are substantial. The murder of transgender women is solely based on our gender. Murder transgender women is a woman's issue. In addition to violence that transgender women face, we are being hindered from using the women's restrooms. For a trans woman to use the women's restroom is not about transgender people having access, but it's about transgender people existing in public and not being denied our humanity. I know that we have made some progress and I appreciate the opportunity to speak here today, but we have a long way to go. However, I have faith that we will accomplish all of what we set out to achieve. start us off with a chant no justice no, no peace. peace there we go no justice no peace no justice no peace no justice no peace all right thank you Woo! my name is Dee Michelle I'm from uh, St. James Infirmary Woo! St. James Infirmary is the US's only occupational and health safety clinic for sex workers I'm proud here as a sex worker, as a trans woman, as a white and Ashkenazi Jew, as an anti-Zionist. And for the record, I am for a one-state solution. So, 
<laughs> Those of us talked a little bit about the history of International Working Women's Day. In 1911, there was a fire in New York City and a young Socialist Party member named Clara Lemlich galvanized the movement for better working conditions for women. Now, this was two years after International Working Women's was declared by another Clara, Clara Zetkin, in Germany. So today, and, and these were all immigrant women, European immigrant women, who came to the U.S., and so I feel that it is very apt that we are marching today to ICE to defend our immigrant sisters. I also thank the organizers of today for including sex workers. As some of you know, we were, people tried to take us off. Not this event, mind you, but the event after our fascist in chief was elected. So thank you for Angela Davis and those other organizers for standing up for sex workers and those in the sex trade. I must admit, there's a lot of privilege for me, a white, although Jewish, sex worker, an indoor sex worker, for me to stand here. If it weren't for the courageous trans women sex workers, Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, I wouldn't be up here. The women's movement owes it to sex workers, particularly sex workers of color. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the anti-trafficking movement here in the U.S. Because this is very, very important, especially for those who care about women's rights. Mm. The anti-trafficking movement has become the new war on drugs. Yep. Please don't get it twisted. The anti-trafficking movement says that they're there to help those who are coerced in the sex trades. This is not what's happening. They say that they're after the Johns. This is not what's happening. We know here, through studies done across the US and here in San Francisco, that the war on anti-trafficking criminalizes both those who are electively in sex work and those who have been coerced into the sex trades. We know that they are criminalized by the cops. We know they are criminalized by the Department of Justice. So I implore you, the next time you get a call from a donor, or excuse me, uh, a donation, solicitation for donation, please put those resources back into communities here in San Francisco. Please donate to Ella Paracuenta Latina. Please donate to TGI Justice Project. Please donate to Taja's Coalition. These are groups that are against carceral feminism. We have to, we have to center anti-carceral feminism in the women's movement. And I thank Angela Davis and Rasmea Oda yes. for doing this yes. on this Woo. day for International Women's Day. Woo. Those of us who have the privilege must raise the social costs under this fascist administration, and that's what we are here to, to do today. And those of us who simply need to survive are committing to the greatest of anti-capitalist causes. Thank you so much.
is he asked a very talented performer if she could perform today, Hazel Rose. Um, and we are so we were so elated that she said yes to us. And we are so elated that we have the opportunity for all of you folks to see her perform. She's a badass feminist from the Bay, raised in the Bay, um, has been an MC in the Bay for years now, holding it down with feminist and spiritual music. So I just want to introduce to you Hazel Rose. Thank you so much. Can you guys please make some noise for yourselves for being here today? everyone that's putting in work right now in many levels and in many ways. Um, it's an honor to be here in solidarity with International Women's Day and with some solidarity of all of our struggles that we're fighting for right now. So I won't take too much time. I'm just rock a couple songs for y'all. That's okay? Yeah! Thank you so much. And if you could do me a favor, could you say what's up to the person next to you and show them a little bit of love for me right now? each other's struggles and uh, sharing that compassion and unity and sharing each other's call whenever we can it's so good to start I won't take too much time and maybe try to so this song is called Pasha Mama and it's about the forces of the earth the feminine forces that are a part of all of us and it's the reason that the destruction will ultimately fail. Hey. Let it roll, we about to roll, you ready to go? Steady roll behind the door, with many openings. Many roads, this love takes many forms. But it's time to slow it, it's slow. We'll be polished and go. Feel me under, the you don't hear me, the rivers when you smoke. If you listen clearly, you can't get in the rhythm, though. Silly, how they all see me high. Touch 
Looking for social the young Contradictions unforgiven Every minute gets more twisted Witnessing wickedness Catch me and black water quickly Give a guess and glimmer of the greed That answers out a thousand chips fall out my lips The bullets for your kids Fake news Poison this with specific targets Customize the breeze Hate violence Ignorance Whoa shit You sign some heavy marks With all the bloody cars Nobody show remorse Denial is the course Lies and violence Lies to die Generations victimized With exclusion and neglect Village and to continue to find our humanity um, and to not let the destructive forces make us destructive as well. Pray that I look through the eyes of hope for love's triumph. It's so 
up for that queen. this crowd. I'm privileged to have a job that is flexible enough to allow me to be here during the workday. I'm gifted with a life where I can feel relatively safe protesting, where I can be out about my experience as a sex worker. I came here today in part to remind you of the many people who cannot afford to be here, to speak about sex work as a reminder of many who are still prevented from doing so by social stigma and legal consequences. I speak from my own experience and in appreciation of the sex workers, many of whom were black, brown, queer, and trans, who have fought so hard for people like me to have spaces to exist. I've been all over the sex industry, from nude modeling and escorting, to working as a dominatrix and as a porn performer. As such, I'm often asked if sex work empowers me, if it's safe, or if I feel morally corrupted by it. I have never been asked these questions in reference to working as an unpaid intern. I've never been asked that about my job, both unpaid and overworked, in the marketing department of an athletic company. I've never been asked that about working retail, a job where sexual harassment was routine, and reporting it could get you fired. I'm only ever asked about my working conditions, my financial security, and my health on the job when the job in question is sex work. Yep. Financial security is not something my generation or class has grown to expect. Yep. Like an oasis, it looks luxurious and attainable, yet somehow always remains just out of reach. Being a sex worker allowed me space to breathe, the ability to put money into a savings account while going to school. Yes, I felt empowered by financial success. Yep. Yet as long as the only industry where women consistently earn more than men carries such stigma, and even then, this is only as performers, not as producers or distributors. Come on, come on. And as long as you live under a capitalist patriarchy, I have to question how empowering sex work can really be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But not because of the nature of the work itself, or because it involves sex. Mm -hmm. It's far more complex than that. Mm -hmm. I think it's the stigma that prevents sex work from being empowering. A stigma that long outlives your sex work career. You can be fired if you are found out to be naked on the internet. You can lose your apartment, or your kids, or your lover. You and your family can be threatened with deportation if discovered. You can lose your privacy, have your name and address posted for people to harass you, and people will say you deserved it. Unlike any other job where you are allowed to change careers, society brands sex workers for life. And this impact disproportionately hurts the most marginalized among us, trans women, black and brown folks, immigrants, people with disabilities, single mothers. The same people who consume pornography will still say that they never want their daughters to do it, because ultimately we as a culture still believe that porn performers are those kinds of women. Not Ivy League students, not loving mothers, not business owners. Sex work may empower some and humiliate others, or we might start feeling one way and eventually feel another. This also holds true for food service, though we ask that question far less often. Stigma against so-called sluts actively prevents sex workers from being able to do other work, even when they want to. Work of any kind is only as empowering as the amount of agency the employees have. Sex work is no different, hence we need rights, not rescue. rather than just pushing women to quit the only job willing to pay a living wage yep. without an exit plan. Yep. We need to look honestly at how we treat labor. 
Remember who the real enemy is, is a takeaway phrase from the Hunger Games. I admit it, I watch some problematic media. <laughs> it's something Katniss's mentor says to her to remind her that the other tributes are also trapped in an abusive system. That the capital keeps the oppressed districts fighting in the games rather than fighting the capital in the streets. I see some real parallels to that in feminism, and it kills me. I see the morals and assumption of mainstream patriarchy in the trans misogyny I witness among some feminists. I see it in the racism of who can come to a conference on feminist pornography. Yep. And I see it yes. in who speaks over whom. Yes. We need to remember who the real enemy is and make sure it's not us simply due to defensiveness. Yes. This isn't some feel-good bullshit meant to say that we should all hold hands and kumbaya. This is about survival, pure and simple. Our critique needs to embrace aspects of sex-positive and sex-negative feminism, to be holistic in their nature, and to save people's lives. I agree with sex-negative feminists that we cannot ignore how mainstream pornography is problematically marketed, what acts are featured above others, who is shown and how, and the entitlement that can come from male privilege. I agree with sex-positive feminists that we cannot ignore how big business ensures via payment processors and terms of service that they continue to define the terms of what is normal and what is deviant. Mm. We cannot ignore issues of representation or the stigma of female sexual pleasure. I'm yes. also aware of how the Nordic model and the stigma it reinforced lay the groundwork for the death of Petite Jasmine, what? even as proponents of it cringe criminalizing Johns was for the safety of women. This isn't just academic theory tossed around a classroom. The longer we go without addressing the issues raised by both the sex positive and sex negative camps, the longer the uninformed public will throw their support behind things like real men don't buy women, or rescue organizations that offer religious propaganda rather than childcare, GED assistance, or places to live. Feminist sex work excites me because I think it offers a response to both areas of concern in a practical, financially sustainable way, or it could. I don't think anyone in the sex industry could say honestly there's nothing fucked up going on in some areas. We cannot be afraid of criticism. We should instead welcome it. We need to see being called out as a moment to check in with ourselves, to seek out the voices of the marginalized in our communities, and to listen. We need to acknowledge that if we are genuine about wanting to hear from less privileged feminists, we need to make it worth their while to take off time work to educate us. And yes, I mean pay them, among other things. I do not believe the sex workers' rights movement or feminism as a whole will succeed if we do not create and encourage space for challenging discourse, and if we, as privileged feminists, do not learn to take a step back and listen. Additionally, we need to make space, safe space, for sex workers to have a bad day at work to give consent without enthusiasm and have that respected, and to make hard choices. It's easy to walk off a set when you know you'll book another gig. It's not so easy when you waited months for this one and rent needs to be paid. And women are expected to provide emotional labor for free on a daily basis. We are told to smile, to look pretty, to be nice and not angry, to be compassionate and not cold. We are punished if we do not respond receptively to catcalls, sometimes with violence, sometimes with death. We cannot respond to this external violence. Mm. So I would ask the crowd, why do you need sex workers to either be empowered or degraded? We don't ask most employees to pick sides because we understand that relationships to jobs are complex. Mm. We might like the money and hate our coworkers, or love our coworkers but hate the pay. We might love our work but hate the impact it has on our relationships. We might have fun sometimes but wish we could be anywhere else at other times. Life's complicated like that especially under white supremacy, capitalism, and patriarchy. Thank you. Flyers up here. If you want to come pick up a flyer, um, there's gender side flyers, there's flyers for the ROAR conference that was announced earlier. So I might say I'm putting myself in danger by standing here right now out in front of here where whose stories were lost to plague and to time you need to be remembered and need to be told because they are just as relevant now as they were 20 years ago as they were 30 years ago right now today Woo! for the elders who are here today. the hatred and misogyny spewed upon all of us whether straight or queer and across the realm of gender identity and presentation this is nothing new the differences 
We are in a position of incredible power through our solidarity. Yep. And the people here in San Francisco and the Bay Area are making the world listen. Yep. This year, our city dedicated the, first, the world's first transgender historical district. Yep. As a trans woman, to be invited to stand here on Women's Day to speak my mind is beyond an honor. I think of those voices silenced and lost. I think of how Sylvia Rivera needed to fight her way onto the stage at Gay Liberation Day in 1973 for just being a trans woman and standing for girls like me. And now our community of differing identities is creating a world where trans and queer people are truly visible and we are celebrating each other. But don't let this visibility, don't let this trans visibility be conflated with winning. We are still dying. We are still being attacked. We are denied education, jobs, housing. Trans women of color have been killed in record numbers this year and just this week we've lost more. And this is no coincidence. By othering us, those bigots, those killers, try to tell us we're subhuman, that we're punchlines. We are their scapegoats. We do not have equal rights and they paint us as a danger to others when we demand those rights. Those of us who can be visible and choose to be, our visibility is a tactic. It is an asset. Our visibility is a truly dangerous thing. It's a danger to the systemic veil they try to pull over us, all of us. Anyone who is not a white man in this climate is being targeted by both the administration and the bigots they empower, so we must not let them win. And both of us in must. I was raised to believe that every person on this planet has the responsibility to act when there is time of great wrongdoing and to drop out of societal expectations to fight that fight. Everything can shift in an instant. And that's when you have to know the right thing to do. And the right thing now is to have empathy for those suffering and for yourselves. To fight for humanity, for health care, for long-term sustainable housing, especially for the most vulnerable. Many queer and trans people, especially trans youths in this climate, are houseless, or lost in between cities, or stuck in dangerous situations. Yet this city votes to build a stadium and more condominiums. Where are more hospitals? Where is more housing? Where is shelter? Where is food? Why are the most righteous of causes the ones with the least resources? What is compassion? Hungry companies are eating up communities in the Mission, in Petraro Hill, West yep. Oakland, and Emeryville. Come Displacements on. are happening every day. Where will all the people go? Yes. A man said to me yesterday, they want to keep us because we feed them. We yes. feed them. We, the poor, yes. the marginalized, the disenfranchised. The power structure of capitalist patriarchy depends on us to grow That's and for right. their system to survive. Yes. But we are rising and we're speaking. And they are scared, trying to push us back down and away, back to our corner. But our voices are being heard. Everyone here today or who will be in Oakland tonight. And we will not stop till justice wins. Shut it down. 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 That was awesome. But as we take the streets, please, this is important. Please respect and celebrate those who support us being in the streets, who do not have the privilege of being here today, or who cannot march for other reasons. They need to hear that their contributions to this revolution are valid and valued. We are in this together. So whether you're holding a sign or have a pot of soup waiting on the stove at home, or an accessible place to crash for someone who's not safe tonight, you're contributing to real social change. Your work is being witnessed. Woo! I was asked to speak about the degenerates a little bit. Give it up for the degenerates, please. Woo! No one can 
say is this, Mother Jones, in her time, dubbed the most dangerous woman in America, would stand clad in black as a visible beacon for those around her. It is said that Mother Jones, when she would show up at the mouth of a mine, 20,000 people would drop their tools and come out and stop working and strike with her because she would show up. You all showed up. To me, that represents protecting each other through solidarity. I proudly wear my patch from the Degenerates because it, re it represents that somewhere, someone has my back, and then God damn it, I've got yours. keep each other safe when we perform and we display our art publicly to show that we are unafraid. As degenderettes, we declare we are visible. We are here, still alive. We celebrate queerness. We celebrate our joyous, differently lived lives and real feminism, which must include people of color, trans women, trans men, genderqueer and non-binary people, femmes, butches, sex workers, elders, tomboys, and TV exhibitionists. Maximum visibility works. If we are loud enough, we are, if we are seen enough, we will not be ignored. And though the Supreme Court won't hear Gavin Grimm's case, first of all, fuck the Supreme Court. Why? That case is on the front page of every paper. Though people will continue to try to make us suffer and to shut up, we will not be silent. Say that with me now. We will not be silenced. We will never be silenced again. Yes. Come on. Books and bodies will not be burned anymore. And we will not assimilate. We will not go back into hiding. We make no mistake. As this cruel administration continues its fascist agenda with trans youth an easy target, queer people from around the country will flock to this radically queer bay because they know that our doors are often open and that we protect our own. This is happening. I know you see it. We're going to need help from all institutions and individuals to support the institutions that do exist to make new institutions and create opportunities to feed and shelter people. All of you have that power. Let me hear you say, power! 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 Most of all, we need to protect trans and queer youth yes. who are probably scared in a way that so many of us can empathize with, no matter how old or young we are. A world that seemed so opportune just weeks ago has been snatched away. For so many, it truly seems like life and death. But I believe we can win. I believe we can rise. I believe we can protect each other and that all of our causes intersect. And so we're gathered here in solidarity with each other to say to police, to say to ICE, to the human beings in these buildings and offices who drive the vans, that take parents, the people that split up families, we say, stop following orders. Stop detaining immigrants. Stop sweeping the houseless. You are culpable. This is not justice. This is violence. Now I'm a poet, so I'm going to try to close with a poem if, you'll, if, if you don't mind. It may seem we are in a valley of despair, with waters of doubt trickling to a sea of disambiguation, leading to a web of lies and distortions where every thread looks like an easy escape. But we get tangled. This is what government looks like for marginalized people. We are prey. We are their fuel. And we're no different from those who stood at any crossroads in people's history to call out bigotry, to put your body on the line, to protect those you can, to protect yourself, to stand for justice in the face of bullies and batons. When any law targets everyone but white cis men, we have a goddamn problem. And we can stop this. We make plans, we act on them, and we demand justice. Justice! today to defend immigrants. Yes. We are here to defend people of color. Yes. We are here to defend Muslims. Yes. We are here to defend people with AIDS. Yes. We are here to defend Black Lives Matter. Yes. We are here to defend the rights of the incarcerated. Yes. We defend those seeking asylum. Yes. 
We defend trans, gender, queer, and non-binary people. We defend people with disabilities. We defend sex workers and medical workers. We defend queer and trans children. All women. Parents. Teachers. Builders. And we fight against toxic white supremacy. Yeah! Toxic masculinity. Yeah! Toxic pavlis patriarchy. Yeah! And we demand justice. Yeah! Um, I just want to remind everybody that there's a child care area. There's a really well-organized group of um, mostly mostly cis men. <laughs> are going to take on that, that work today. Uh, they're comrades, they're friends, and they're, they're good with kids and they have jukeboxes. I, I just have one, so I'm not sure that. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we can get them to keep doing it, you know, for, forever. Um, but they're over there. If you if you want to drop off a, a kiddo during the march or something, um, they have uh, fun activities and materials. There's also materials to make signs and banners over here. In that area, there's markers and poster board. Go ahead and make a sign. Get juice for the march. Um, I just wanted to say, um, read a couple words from the uh, statement released by the gender strike organizers um, who say, in solidarity with the international women's strike, we propose a feminist strike which will not be content to pinkwash the bombs on Baghdad or to get crowned honoring biology as our destiny. Instead, we propose a different strike, a strike against all forms of gender domination. I'm just reading parts, but on ice, like why we are shutting down ice. As feminists, we see the struggle against ice, against deportations, against borders, imperialism, nationalism, and fascism as deeply intertwined with and crucial to the struggle for gender liberation. We call upon antagonists to these systems of oppression in the Bay Area for a day of action to shut down ice and demand the removal of any and all ice operations from San Francisco. Ideal or a convenient phrase. Yep, and get ice the fuck out of the Bay Area! Yeah. Woo! We call for this as one step toward fighting for a world we can survive and want to live in. Yep. Ice is a direct manifestation of the worst forms of oppression faced by the most vulnerable women, queer, and trans folks. Yeah. Just last week, or two weeks ago now, <laughs> ICE arrested and deported a trans, or she's detained a trans woman on the steps of an El Paso courthouse after she filed a protective order against her abusive boyfriend. <laughs> por estar aquí, por acudir a este llamado. Mi nombre es Berta Hernández, uh, soy dirigente del Partido de Izquierda, he sido socialista toda mi vida, me gusta mucho los, los, los 
los, los discursos que se han dado en este momento en contra del capitalismo. Para mí definitivamente la liberación de la mujer tiene que ver con la destrucción del Estado, la propiedad privada y el grupo de Good afternoon, my name is Berta Hernandez. I've been a member and leader of the Socialist Party and I've, I've been liking uh, a lot so far the speeches that um, I've been listening and uh, especially about the destruction of uh, capitalist system and human rights. Muchas gracias. La, y también es de una gran satisfacción que tantas personas se reúnan aquí en una acción que tiene que ver con ir a las oficinas de la migra y tratar de cerrarlas. Como decía la compañera, el hecho de la ciudad santuario es una falacia en San Francisco. Únicamente se llena la boca los políticos de esta ciudad, el alcalde, los supervisores, algunas organizaciones que tienen abogados, que defienden a los inmigrantes que están en situaciones muy difíciles. Y todos nos llenamos la boca de que vivimos en una ciudad santuario. Sin embargo, en esta ciudad, y no solamente bajo el gobierno de Trump, sino bajo el gobierno de Obama, han llevado a la gente de las casas. Una tras otra hemos visto a los miembros de nuestra comunidad cómo han sido deportados. No solamente en San Francisco, en todo el país. Pero si nosotros realmente decimos que queremos una ciudad santuario, tenemos que exigir una ciudad santuario. Y no sé si hoy vamos a conseguir ese objetivo. Sin embargo, creo que es muy importante que lo demandemos desde este momento y que no dejamos, dejemos que nos digan solamente que es una ciudad santuario y quedarnos con esa realidad que, que en realidad no, no, no hace sentido, no, hace, no le hace justicia a las personas que están siendo deportadas. The fact of calling uh, San Francisco a sanctuary city is just a lie that we all feel proud to say that this is a sanctuary city, but it's really not. People are taking, uh, are taken from their homes, families are destroyed, and so it has to stop uh, being only a way of politicians to just uh, feel that they're or try to do like they're doing their job when they're really not and not only Trump but also Obama he was being deported I mean deported um, um, actually he has been the biggest deported yeah. president in history and um, so so yeah we uh, she says we uh, she doesn't know that if today we are getting that goal of uh, making this a real sanctuary city, but we are really gonna try. ¿Cuál es la realidad de las mujeres inmigrantes y qué tiene que ver este Día Internacional de la Mujer con la cuestión de inmigración? Y todo tiene que ver. La cuestión de la inmigración, el desplazamiento, el desarraigo, el llegar a un nuevo país, el no tener derechos, todo eso tiene que ver con el feminismo porque son mujeres que atraviesan las fronteras y que tienen que vivir con una realidad extremadamente hostil. Se dice también que nosotros tenemos derechos, que reconozcas tus derechos, que veas tus derechos, que tu derecho es no abrirle a la migra, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera. Y en realidad es una comunidad sin derecho. No tenemos derecho a estar aquí. Somos ilegales, compañeros. Y se verá muy feo. Y se vea muy bonito decir solamente indocumentados, pero se ha violentado una ley fundamental, una ley federal, que es el hecho de que nosotros atravesamos la frontera y nos plantamos en un lugar en donde no se nos quiere. Tampoco tenemos el derecho al trabajo, porque si no tienes papeles, no te tienes derecho al trabajo, entonces tienes que agarrar trabajo de manera ilegal y te van a pagar el peor de los salarios y te van a pagar para tratar con la punta del pie. Tampoco tienes derecho a tener una salud completa, un cuidado de salud completo a todos los sentidos, mucho menos salud reproductiva. Tampoco tienes derecho a tener una educación a todos los niveles y de educación universitaria. Ya vemos a los pobres dreamers lo que les están haciendo. Tampoco tenemos derecho, que es muy importante, el derecho a la movilidad. situation 
treatment of um, uh, immigrant women and how the vulnerability of immigrant women is uh, one of the biggest ones in, in the U.S. population because of the fact that we cross a border and we take this territory and we live in this territory, it's something really uncomfortable for a lot of people. And uh, so we don't, so we don't have um, the rights that we should. We don't have working rights. We don't have uh, access to health care. We don't have a um, way of protecting our bodies to be exploited uh, by uh, while working illegally because that's how we are called illegal aliens. So the fact that we are illegal makes us. Uh, vulnerable of not having the rights that we should have as human beings. El otro derecho que es muy importante que no se tiene es el derecho a la movilidad. Y tal vez para mí no debiera ser el más importante, pero es muy importante y creo que es muy importante para todas las mujeres el hecho de no poder moverte, de estar atrapada, de no poder atravesar la frontera de regreso e ir a ver a los hijos que dejaste. No hay dolor más grande para una mujer que dejar tus hijos del otro lado y que no puedes, no puedes regresar a verlos o que no pueden venir. Y pasan los años, y pasan dos, y pasan cinco, y pasan diez años. Y el bebé que dejaste de meses tiene ya diez, once años. O el niño que dejaste de cinco es un adolescente. Esa, ese sentimiento de estar atrapado, y no únicamente con los hijos, también con las familiares, con los padres, el no poder regresar a verlos morir. Estás atrapado en una jaula que tal vez no se ve, pero son, son, son los esclavos atrapados a un lugar en donde no hay posibilidad de salida porque estás exponiendo tu subsistencia y la subsistencia de tus hijos. Mobility. They are trapped in a place where they cannot cross the border to see their family, to see their children. Uh, sometimes they leave their babies while being months old and then they are 10 years old, they are teenagers and they still uh, can't see their mom and their mom can see their children. They can't cross the border to see their parents die because they are slaves to a territory that can't allow them to get out and see their families. Sin embargo, como socialista, quiero que caiga el Estado, que quiero que caiga el capitalismo la opresión y todos los males que trae este sistema y pienso en mi gente, pienso en mi comunidad pienso en la fuerza impresionante que nosotros tenemos y no estamos aquí porque para nosotros el venir aquí realmente es un privilegio algunos de nosotros estamos aquí pero no la mayoría la mayoría está trabajando porque no puede deshacerse de ese trabajo pero tenemos una fuerza impresionante porque nosotros estamos en las fábricas, estamos en los campos, estamos en los puertos. Esta, esta ciudad, si ustedes se fijan un poco en la noche, cuando están todas las luces prendidas de estos edificios, hay uno de nosotros en cada uno de esos pisos. Limpiando. Nosotros también estamos en todas las casas de los ricos. Limpiando. Cuidando niños. Yo creo que en la Casa Blanca habrá otros de nosotros que también están por ahí limpiando. Solitos en la noche. Nosotros tenemos una gran fuerza por los números que tenemos, por el papel que tenemos en las estructuras de este país. Nuestra comunidad tiene una, una fuerza impresionante. El nivel de opresión es enorme, pero también el nivel de capacidad para poder transformar la situación en la que estamos es enorme. Se le ha llamado el gigante dormido y ese gigante puede despertar. and acknowledge our strength and the power that we have as a community because we are everywhere. We are in industry, we are on the streets, we are in every building. Every night when you see a light in this building, there's one of us taking care of that floor. One, there's one of us uh, cleaning in their houses. There surely are many of us in the White House making food and um, <laughs> so
So Berta says, as a socialist that wants the state to be destroyed. And, and um, uh, be aware of this strength that it's been called the sleeping giant and that giant can surely wake up. <laughs> De nosotros yo veo mi tarea el organizar a mi comunidad continuaré haciendo esa organización es muy importante pero también es importante que nosotros nos liguemos a otros movimientos a otras comunidades por eso es importante que estemos aquí que nos yo lleve de regreso lo que vi en esta manifestación para continuar esta organización y estas conexiones que son muy importantes so it's also important that we work on uh, networking and knowing each other as, as organizations so we can be all together in the same time. Una cosa muy importante también de de esta lucha es reconocer al Partido Demócrata. Reconocer cuál ha sido su papel y el hecho de acarrear todo el agua a su molino y aparecer con la cara del buen agente y la cara del representante de los trabajadores, de las mujeres y de los oprimidos. Y no lo es. Es el peor de las mentiras. Esto no es solamente defendernos de Trump, es defendernos de Trump, de las corporaciones, de los capitalistas, del Partido Republicano y del Partido Demócrata. Uh, it's also important that we remember how we need to protect ourselves not only from Trump, from corporations and from the Republican Party, but also from the Democrat Party uh, yeah. that has something in terms of gaining resources and bringing, uh, how do you say, uh, <laughs> Well, they, they be in, uh, they've been acting in their own benefit instead of our acting on, on people's benefit, really. So, en caso de que alguno quede por aquí que sea registrado demócrata de alguna casualidad, por favor que se dé registre y que se registre como independiente, como una persona independiente de Clinton State o algún otro partido como el Peace and Freedom Party. Yes, Peace and Freedom Party. So, if you're still registered to the Democrat Party, please unregister and. Lo último que quería decir es invitarlos a todos a la movilización del primero de mayo. En el 2006 hubo una enorme movilización de los inmigrantes en el Día Sin Inmigrantes en el 2006. Es la primera vez que se recobra el Día del Internacional de los Trabajadores en este país y fueron los inmigrantes los que nos pusieron otra vez en el mapa de esta, la política norteamericana. Por todos estos años, durante 11 años, ha habido otras marchas, otros intentos de reorganizarse, etc. Y ahora viene un año muy importante. Los ataques de Trump definitivamente son ataques en contra de la mujer y otras minorías. Pero no podemos negar que el ataque central es en contra de los inmigrantes latinoamericanos y sobre todo los mexicanos. Es absolutamente claro lo que él dice con su muralla, que los mexicanos somos de lo peor. Ustedes saben toda la historia. Entonces, por lo tanto, es muy importante esta movilización del primero de mayo. Es, es recobrar otra vez este Día Internacional de los Trabajadores, de hablar de la unidad de los trabajadores, de las comunidades oprimidas, buscar una alternativa al Partido Demócrata y sí, la defensa incondicional de los inmigrantes y los refugiados. Ni uno deportado, nadie perseguido, nunca más. Creo que esto es muy importante el primero de mayo para estas movilizaciones. Va a haber en todo el país. Hay una que se está organizando en San Francisco. Ya se formó una coalición, que es la coalición primero de mayo. Vamos a partir de estas escalinatas y vamos a ir al City Hall ese día. Y no vemos el primero de mayo como el final de la lucha. Vemos como el inicio de la organización, de algo grande que tiene que suceder en este país. Inviting us all to uh, go to the first of May demonstration, the Workers' Day, that uh, for many years uh, was a, a different kind of demonstration. But this this year is going to be uh, a way of reappropriating the, the work, of the day of the workers, and uh, she's making um, a point on how immigrants immigrants uh, have been always crucial in this fight for the workers' rights and, and how now immigrants 
uh, are being targeted by um, by the current president, current presidency, uh, Latin American immigrants, also Arab immigrants, and very specifically Mexican immigrants. So we gotta go and show our our power. And so um, let's all go. <laughs> con una consigna que para salir antes de la marcha si todos quieren gritar conmigo una que se saben que es muy fácil que es sí se puede 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 el pueblo unido jamás será vencido el pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. a stage like these speakers did, um, specifically in a moment in time when folks are being targeted by the alt-right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I want to just put it out there to many of you today that some folks in this, in our, amongst us, may be masked up, may be covering their faces, and that is a tactic for, of safety. So please stand in solidarity with those folks and protect their safety as well. folks here, white folks, the police are not here to protect you. ICE, ICE is he not here to protect you. So think about who you're standing in solidarity with and kill the fucking cop inside your head. A few other safety notes. Stay hydrated. Wear sunscreen. Um, also, we've got some folks over here that have um, shown up with pedicabs. So put it up, pedicabs, thank you so much. If anyone is not able-bodied or just feeling fatigued, get your booties over there. Um, and you too can participate in the shutting down of ice. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna march. Let's go. Thank you.